Have you ever taken a walk for the sake of taking a walk? Not to get some exercise, make it to work or school, or complete an errand. Just a walk, with no clear destination or intention, other than to soak in some sights and clear your mind. If you have, I hope it was a most satisfying saunter. If you haven't, don't stress. I'm not here to shame you and to tell you to get out more. I'm just here to let you know that there's a specific word for meaningless walking. Flaneuring is a French word which simply means to wander with intention or to be intentionally aimless. The term finds its origins in the romanticism of the 19th century, when well-to-do Parisian men would stroll through the streets, carefully observing everyday surroundings, while finding beauty in what many would consider the mundane. And yes, a few of them were drunk. I learned that from Erica Owen's The Art of Flaneuring, a book all about the evolution of the term as it moved beyond the realm of drunken daydreamers to become the inclusive act of exploring the wonderful world of the everyday. And like most things I stumble upon that pique my interest, I felt a need to share what I had learned from her by relating her findings to the relatable art of filmmaking. There's a problem though. Finding a film which shows the act of flaneuring while embracing its spirit of aimlessness is a challenge. Not only because sitting down and watching a film is the furthest thing from taking a walk, but also because the vast majority of movies are about physical journeys. Not aimless ambles, but structured stories that are made in such a way to take the protagonist from point A to B. An obvious choice was 2011's Midnight in Paris, a film about a nostalgic screenwriter who finds himself mysteriously going back to the 1920s after senselessly strolling the streets of Paris at midnight. Though it does have a lot of rambling, it's not exactly flaneuring. However apt Owen Wilson's character may be at embracing an aimless philosophy at the start, his priorities soon shift. After his first time jump, he is anything but unintentional, returning to the same time and place with the want of going somewhere particular. Additionally, as viewers, we become more invested in his personal journey, and less so in admiring his surroundings from afar, as true flaneurs would. No, I needed a filmmaker with a greater interest in the observation of daily life, one whose characters take a backstage to allow the backdrop of the urban surroundings to become the central focus of the feature. Enter Jacques Tati. Jacques Tati was a French filmmaker best known for his awkward on-screen persona, Monsieur Hulot, an endearing idiot who stumbled through city streets and onto cinema screens during the mid-20th century. His four films, released between the 50s and 70s, can be best described in one of two ways. The first, and most popular way, is to see them as nothing more than light entertainment. Comedies with the sort of silly slapstick you might tune into on a lazy Sunday afternoon alongside the antics of Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, and Mr. Bean. Alternatively, you could view them as works of art while sipping a glass of wine with a cultured look of smug superiority. You see, unlike his alter ego, Tati was deliberate and obsessive. He wasn't interested in the commercial aspects of his work, and more so in choreographing elaborate gags and constructing complex sets with contraptions, gadgets, and gizmos to the point of bankruptcy. Therefore, it's not uncommon to view Hulot's outings both as charming comedies and handcrafted expressions of a single creative personality. Well, that is the way I like to try to express myself. As Lee Hillica writes, Tati was one of the very few filmmakers to investigate in any depth the evolving technological social nexus of French society during a time that saw massive and rapid urbanization shifts in structures and patterns of work and leisure, and the expansion of the car sector within the context of a developing consumer culture. Lots of words there. In other words, he liked exploring big ideas in a simple way, by walking. His movie Playtime is a perfect example of this. The critically acclaimed flick follows an unemployed Hulo as he goes to meet with a business contact, but ends up becoming completely lost in the process. 
As with all his films, the point is not where he is going or what he learns, but how he gets there. And as he goes with the flow, the entertainment comes that when he frequently gets swept along by gaggling groups of pedestrians, businessmen and tourists, who deposit him in the architectural monstrosities where his next misadventure will start. Which brings us on to the important aspects of flaneuring, observation and self-reflection. Flaneuring isn't just about walking and looking at things. Well, it kind of is, though as much as we are meant to enjoy passing through these places, there's also an element of pondering required to receive the full benefits of doing so. What you think about is up to you, it will be different for everyone. For Jacques Tati, it's all about considering the systems that shape the modern urban setting and observing what impact they have on people's lives. Monsieur Hulot is a bit of a deviant, an antidote to that overly aggressive and cynical environment that takes technical and material progress for granted. Although he seems behind the times, hopeless in the belly of the beast, it is in fact because of this outlook he is able to take in the full splendour of the meaning of things that surround him. As the crowds of people are busily going here and there, he is there too, observing without a care. It's an unmatched childlike awe, the kind you only get when going somewhere new and don't carry the usual worries and distractions so many of us are burdened with day to day. Because what I'm trying to do is to defend the people, defend yeah. the personality. Why do they change? Because the architect have decide that they have to live in other lines. Erica Owen calls this careless walking. That's not careless in the negative sense, but instead a moment in your schedule where you give yourself permission to worry less about what you ought to be doing at any given moment. Yes, that still means getting to places you need to be and doing things you need to do, just in such a way to allow yourself time to clear your head. You can't control every situation you find yourself in, but you can control how you react to them. Somehow taking into account the smaller things of your surroundings helps with finding that sense of direction. Of course, all of this might seem a bit of a pointless chore to the uninitiated. As would watching playtime, the humour requires attention to subtle detail and nuance over time because the scenic construction and multiple plane choreography of humans and objects is quite complex. What's more, Hulo is often absent or only one of many possible focal points for the spectator's attention, leaving many confused about what it is they are actually meant to be watching. However, when we remove our need for a structured narrative in a movie and take into consideration all of the nuances that fill Tati's screen, only then can we begin to see a picture emerge. Looking beyond the specific activity that the protagonist is engaged in, we come to realise that very few people in his surroundings notice much about the reality that surrounds them. They miss out on all the fun they could be having. This can be read in the beginning of Monsieur Hulot's holiday, it says, don't look for a plot, for a holiday is meant to be purely for fun. If you look for it, you will find more fun in ordinary life than in fiction. So relax, enjoy yourselves, see how many people you can recognize. You might even recognize yourself. What I'm trying, and maybe it, it is pretentious, I don't know. It's uh, not exactly a movie. It'd be not as good as a movie. But I want that the movie start when you leave the cinema. As Pedro Gonzalo puts it, Tati seems to be suggesting that such things take place everywhere and at all times, only we don't notice them when we aren't looking. Fun is to be found when we look for it. And sure, the world around us is more complex today, moving faster than anything Jack Tati had to deal with back in his day. Yet the same rules apply. We could probably all do with a laugh, a bit of fresh air, and some time to think.